Hi students. In this video, we will cover questions number 68 to 72 in the 2024 SHSAT handbook. Grab a notebook and a pencil and let's go ahead and get started. For question 68, it says what value of n makes the equation above true? If you notice, this is a proportion. When solving proportions, you can cross multiply to solve for the unknown variable. Let's give it a try. 81 over 10 equals 9 over n. We'll go ahead and cross multiply here. We have 81n equals 90. Our final step is to divide both sides by 81. So n equals 1 and 9 over 81. But wait, we can still simplify this answer even further. We will have 1 and 1 ninth. So the correct answer is choice F. Remember, to convert an improper fraction into a mixed number, we identify how many times the denominator can go into 90, which is one time, and then we're looking for that remainder, which is nine. So that's how we got one and nine over 81. Question number 69. If N is an integer and three N plus three is an even number, which expression must also represent an even number? Let's come up with an example of what n can represent. We can test out n equals two and n equals three because the first piece of information we need to identify is if n is even or odd. If n was two, then three times two plus three would be nine. Three times two is six, six plus three is nine. If n was three, then three times three would be nine plus three would be 12. So notice when n was an even number, the outcome was odd. And that is incorrect because the problem explicitly states that three n plus three is even. So we know that n has to be an odd number. So let's test out the value n equals three in our other answer choices. We have five times three plus one, which is 16. We have four times three plus five, which is 17. We have two times three plus three, which is nine. And we have three plus two, which is five. After checking out these four answer choices, the only one here that is correct and that's also even is answer choice A. A great way to solve number sense problems is always to test out a positive and negative integer and sometimes even zero to check out which answers might make the most sense. Question 70, the product of two positive integers is 65. Which number could be the sum of the two integers? We're gonna check out all the possible factors of 65. We can have one times 65, we can have five times 13, and that's just about it. So 65 has four possible factors. The question states which number could be the sum of the two integers. So let's go ahead and add our two pairs. One plus 65 is 66, so that's one possible answer. And five plus 13 is 18, so that's the other possible answer. When we take a look at our answer choices, we can see that F is the correct answer. Let's check out question 71. Question number 71. If N is an odd integer that is less than negative 3.25, what is the greatest possible value of N? For these types of problems, I like to go ahead and create a number line for myself so I can visualize exactly what is going on. Let's add a scale. Now that we have our number line, Let's identify where negative 3.25 is located. It would be somewhere in between negative three and negative four. So we would put it right over here. This is negative 3.25. And the question is asking us to find an odd integer, right? An odd integer that is still less than negative 3.25. So that means we need to look to the left of negative 3.25. So the greatest possible odd integer that's still less than negative 3.25 is negative five. This is the largest integer, right? 
that's still less than negative 3.25. So D is the correct answer. For question 72, you are being asked to interpret information about a box and whisker plot. Make sure you take some time to review our video on how to plot and interpret a box and whisker plot. Let's get started. A swim instructor used the box plot below to display the distribution of the ages of students who signed up for swim lessons. Here we have the diagram below. Take a second to ask yourself, what do you notice about the box plot and what do you wonder? I'll share some of my findings. I notice a few important pieces of information about the box plot. Make sure you familiarize yourself with these five core data points. The box plot starts off at seven, so this represents the smallest value in the entire data set. The largest value in the data set is 12. That's usually where the box plot ends. So largest value is 12. Since the line in the middle of the box is nine, that represents the median or middle number of the entire data set. And then we have eight and 10. We call this the lower quartile or the first quartile, and we call the 10 the third quartile or the upper quartile. To calculate the interquartile range, we go ahead and subtract 10 minus eight, and that gives us two. But to calculate the range of the entire data set, we have 12 minus seven, which is five. Let's go ahead and evaluate the answer choices here. The question says, which statement about the distribution of ages is true? The data contains an outlier. It's quite difficult to determine whether or not a box plot has an outlier. There is a formula that we can use, but it's not visible to the naked eye. So more than likely, this is not the correct answer. Approximately half the students are exactly nine years old. That's not what the box plot tells us. There's no way for us to identify how many students are exactly nine years old. We just know that the median of the data set, meaning the student right in the middle is nine, but we can't tell just how many nines we have. Approximately one fourth of the students are at least 10 years old. To be at least 10 years old means you're greater than or equal to 10. So that would represent this region right here, which is absolutely correct. From 10 to 12 represents 25% of the data set, which is exactly what this question is saying. Approximately one fourth or 25% of all of the students are at least 10 years old. So that means they're between 10 and 12 years old. So that is the correct answer. Let's review answer choice H. The interquartile range, which is two, is three greater than the range of the data. And you can see that that's not correct. The interquartile range is three less than the range of data. So E, F, and H are definitely incorrect. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.